Today we're unraveling the complex world of migraines and headaches and exploring a biohacker's protocol to manage them effectively. All of this is just to keep Leo's memory and mission thriving. So let's start. So migraine are not just headaches. Did you know there are like both vascular and neuronal theory behind why migraine occur? And ladies, if you ever wonder why migraine hits just when your estrogen levels fall, well, it's because there is a connection there. But there's more. Migraines also have some surprising links with asthma, gallstones, and even tinnitus. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce this right. Tinnitus. <laughs> and here is the twist. Um, if you're a woman with migraine, there might be a silver lining um, with your coronary arteries health, but... Before we start celebrating, there is also a darker side to consider. Uh, migraines might be about giving us hints about our brain health in the long run because women with migraines are more likely to develop dementia as they age and both genders are more likely to develop brain tumors with a history of migraines. All right, so let's dive deeper into our next segment, methylation. Now, if you're new, you might be wondering what on earth is methyl methylation? Um, I want you to think of it as a vital process in our body where a single carbon and three hydrogen atom, known as methyl groups, group, sorry, are added to another molecule. So this tiny change can have a big impact on how our gene functions. So this process might be closely linked to migraines. Now, within this methylation word, there is a molecule called homocysteine. Leo has talked about homocysteine in previous video, and along this video, I will make sure to try to link them so you can learn more about those processes. So without getting too technical, homocysteine is an amino acid in our blood. So high levels of homocysteine have been linked to heart disease, but recent research suggests it also might play a role in migraines. So by testing homocysteine levels, you might get a clearer picture of what's triggering those painful migraines. So now that you learn more about methylation, let's talk about supplements. Supplements have actually shown promising results in managing migraines, and they might just have been the relief like some of you have been looking for. And this is not the complete protocol because the, I will share the complete protocol at the end of the video. First off, let's start with magnesium. So we're not talking about just any magnesium, we're talking about magnesium glycinate or magnesium biglycinate. So these forms are known for their high bioavailability, meaning our body can absorb and use them more efficiently. Magnesium creams or oil, when applied to the skin, can be better absorbed than oral supplements, simply because by bypassing the digestive system, their cream delivers magnesium directly to your cells, offering potential relief for those very painful migraines. Studies have shown that magnesium, whether taken orally or applied topically, can be as effective as some pharmacologic intervention in managing migraines. Personally, I use different kinds of magnesium in my own life. I use a magnesium cream, that's magnesium glycinate, and I also give it to my daughter. And I also take another kind of magnesium, magnesium l theranate I am somebody prone to migraine. I find the source that it's from eating chocolate. But I still take those two kind of magnesium for many other reasons. And um, I can link which one um, Leo was ordering and which one I'm still ordering uh, on the bio. There are affiliated link from Amazon. But all the products have been researched extensively on uh, consumerlab.com. And if you don't know consumerlab.com in the US, the supplement company are not regulated. Most of them don't have what they tell you they have. And um, consumer labs, they actually independently test each supplement and give you the reports. And so you can find which supplement has the most compound, but also which one is the cheapest for what they offer. So it's just a side note, but I want to make sure it's clear and everybody knows that, you know, Leo was never the kind of person that would promote any product and will always do the research extensively. And I will follow along what he has done because I want to keep his legacy, but also his ethics. Now let's talk about our next supplements. We have EPA. So EPA, which stands for, and I'm sorry for the pronunciation, I think it's ecosaspantanoic, something like that, acid. Um, now, 
That name is intimidating, but simply put, like EPA is a type of omega-3 fatty acids that's primarily found in fish oil. It plays a very crucial role in our body inflammatory response. I will link the video about fish oil and EPA and their benefits because I think everybody should actually watch that video. Um, but now there is an interesting thing. So EPA has been shown to reduce the expression of the COX-2 gene. So for those who are unfamiliar, the COX-2 gene is actually responsible for producing COX-2 enzyme, which in turn produces chemical called prostaglandins. Maybe. I think it's pronounced like that. So these prostaglandins play a key role in promoting inflammation, pain, and fever. So by reducing COX-2 gene expression, EPA can actually help decrease the production of this inflammatory prostaglandin. Think of the COX-2 gene as a faucet and the prostaglandin as water. EPA essentially helps turn down the flow, leading to less inflammation and consequently fewer migraine attacks. Lastly, let's talk about alpha lipoic acid. So alpha lipoic acid is not just any ordinary supplements. Like it's a potent antioxidant that play a crucial role in like energy metabolism within our cells. So think of it like as a protection, protective shield, sorry, um, warding off like harmful free radical that can cause like cellular damage. When taken as a dosage of 300 milligrams twice daily, studies have shown a significant reduction in both the frequency of the severity of the migraine, but also the severity of them. Now, let's talk about acute and prophylactic treatments. So when a migraine strikes, like it's really crucial to have effective acute treatment on hand to make sure you alleviate the pain and discomfort. So let's explore some of the most commonly used ones. So the first one is aspirin. So aspirin is very effective acute in prophylactic treatment for migraines. It also has anti-inflammatory properties that can help you reduce the severity of the migraines and it can also be used prophylactically to prevent their onset. The second one is acetaminophen. It's another over-the-counter pain reliever. Acetaminophen is particularly effective in treating migraines. So sometimes when it's combined with aspirin, it enhances its efficacy. Another one is caffeine. So caffeine has a very interesting twist. Well, like consuming caffeine regularly can exacerbate migraine frequency for some people. When a migraine does strike, caffeine can act as an effective acute treatment. That's something I had experienced before. And every time I had a migraine, I will drink coffee and it helped almost instantly because it narrows the blood vessel around the brain, which pro can provide you relief. Another one is are the triptans. And those are a um, class of medications specifically designed to treat migraines. They work by stimulating serotonin receptors in the brain, which can cause the blood vessels to constrict and reduce inflammation. So among the triptan, there is elitriptans, especially at a dose of 40 milligrams. It's the medication that stands out the most and is proven to be the most effective when it's taken on the onset of a migraine. When it comes to the elitriptan, it's actually more effective when administrated nasally. So intranasal delivery when it comes to this medication is often superior than anything else because it allows faster absorption and can basically provide a quicker relief. So when it comes to migraines, prevention is one of the best strategies. So prophylactic treatments are designed to reduce the frequency, severity, and the duration of those migraines. So let's look into some of the most effective prophylactic treatments. So to clarify, the term prophylactic refers to any treatment or action taken to prevent disease or a medical condition before it can develop. So let's start with beta blockers. So these are among the most commonly prescribed prophylactic treatments for migraines. They have a very strong track record with greater than 50% likelihood to reduce migraines and frequency by over half. So the preferred medication for this are propanolol and metropol. We also have valproic acid. So this is another very effective prophylactic treatment. So originally it was designed as an anticonvulsant and it was found to be very effective in migraine preventions as well. Then we have antidepressants. Only certain antidepressants, especially those that inhibit the reuptake of noradrenaline or antagonize serotonin 5-HT2 receptors have shown efficacy in preventing migraines. Amitriptyline and velafaxine are the best example. 
There are also evidence that suggests that combining an antidepressant with a tranquilizer might produce synergistic effects and enhancing the preventive capabilities. And so as a side note, um, aerobic exercise and vitamin D supplementation potentially enhance the effectiveness of these drugs. Another one that we need to address, it's Botox. So Botox is commonly associated with cosmetic procedure, obviously, but is also shown as effective as amitriptyline in preventing migraines. And last, we have erinumab. This is a groundbreaking treatment, being the first FDA-approved anti-calcitonin gene receptor peptide, so CGRP, um, medication for acute migraine treatment. So CGRP is a like neuropeptide that expands blood vessels and triggers inflammation. It's believed to be a key player of the onset of migraines. First, you need to check your levels of homocysteine because elevated homocysteine can be associated with various health issues, including migraine. Second, you have to make some lifestyle adjustments, cardio and sauna. Engage in like 30 minutes cardio at 120 BPM followed by a 20 minutes session of a Finnish sauna. Then we have three supplementations. If you don't know where to start on supplementation, I will highly recommend to start taking Leo's anti-inflammatory hydrolytic stack. Um, take all of them, watch the video about it. It really helps combat inflammation and will solve, most likely solve your migraine issue on top of solving any other issue inflammation is. If you want to, don't want to take all of this, you can also just take magnesium, um, ideally magnesium biglycinate. So start with like 300 to 600 milligrams and gradually increase to achieve like a daily intake of like 1.5 to 2 grams. You can take it orally or you can take it, like I said, uh, subcutaneously. Next, we have extended release sodium valproate. So begin with a lower dose and gradually increase to 1 gram twice daily. Then we have propanolol. Take 10 to 40 milligrams with each dose of sodium valproate. Baby aspirin, you take one upon waking up. Then we have amitriptyline. So start with a lower dose and work your way up to 50 to 100 milligrams before bedtime. However, if you experience any cardiac side effect, which you can, consider switching to agomelatine instead. Then arenumab. If it's within your budget, consider subcutaneous injections of 70 milligrams once to twice a month. And for your acute migraine onset, we have elatriptan, uh, 40 milligrams at the onset of the migraine. We have aspirin, up to one gram, that can, that's the dosage that can alleviate the symptoms. And caffeine, 200 milligrams can help constrict blood vessels, potentially alleviating migraine pain. Thanks again for bearing with me and until next time, stay curious and stay well.